Welcome to Veristall, a YouTube channel devoted to my horror stories. I'm Brandon Faircloth, and if you enjoy the story you're about to hear, please like, share, and subscribe. Today's story is called, There's Blood Coming From That Van. There's blood coming from that van. I looked over to where AJ was pointing, three houses up on the far side of the street. An old, green, custom van was leaned crookedly against the curb. I'd never noticed it on AJ Street before, but it had the desolate look of a car that had been abandoned to rot for some time. The walls of the van were tinged with rust and faded paint, the ghost of some old, airbrushed scene barely visible on the street side of the van. It was getting dark, and we weren't that close, but I didn't see what he was talking about. Where? He went to point again and then seemed to think better of it. Um, you see the far right bottom corner of the bat doors? It's running down the bumper there. You see it? At first I didn't, but then I caught motion as another rivulet of something dripped off the bumper and onto the asphalt below. Yeah, I could tell now that something was definitely leaking, but how was AJ saying it was blood? So typical of him, getting dramatic over nothing. Rolling my eyes, I elbowed him. Yeah, I see it, but no way you can see it's blood from here. He frowned at me. It's blood. You can tell the way it's moving. Plus, what else could it be? Snorting, I shook my head as I glanced back at it. Um, how about literally anything? Maybe they had a crate of oil or something in the van and it's leaking? I mean, it doesn't look like water the way it's dripping, but let's not jump straight to the horror movie alternative, okay? I looked at AJ for confirmation that he was going to chill out, and what I saw on his face gave me pause. He seemed really worried about it, maybe even a little scared. I thought that it was just some of his normal silly bullshit, but now I wasn't so sure. Look, when did you first notice the van? Has it been here for a while? He shook his head, glancing at me before going back to staring at the van. No, never. I mean, no, I've never seen it here before. It wasn't out here when I left to meet you at the movie today. I raised an eyebrow. Are you sure? You tend to space out and not notice stuff a lot of times. I pointed toward the van, and those tires look flat as shit. That thing looks like it's been parked for a while, is my point. He shook his head again. No, I swear. I would have noticed an old serial killer rape van parked down from my house. And believe me, if it had been parked there for more than a couple of days, my mom would have called the police or city council or something. She loses her shit about that kind of stuff. Nodding, I looked back at the van. Closer up, I had to admit that whatever was leaking from the van did look thick like I'd think blood would look, and it could have been a dark red, though I couldn't say for sure. What caught my eye more was the airbrushed painting on the side of the van. It was in better shape than I'd thought originally, and at this angle and distance I could make out more details. It was an elaborate portrait of a large oval lake. On the far bank I could see what might have been buildings, or just rust and damage to the overall picture backlit by the light of twin red and green suns that were either setting or rising in the background. The whole thing had a faded, hazy look that made it look almost dreamlike, though whether that was intentional or just due to age, I couldn't say for sure. But I did want to get a closer look at Hey, we're here. I looked around, momentarily confused, before focusing on AJ with a flush of embarrassment. Oh shit, sorry. I guess I spaced out for a second. He gave me a distracted smile before looking past me to where the van was parked. Fuck. That van is even closer to the house than I realized. I turned and looked. He was right. I would have sworn it was further down the street, too. I know it's weird, but big deal, right? Let's just go on inside, okay? He nodded, barely seeming to hear me. When I poked him in the stomach, he looked down and nodded again, this time meeting my eyes with a nervous smile. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Let's go. Normally I would have walked two miles back to my house when I left AJ's that night, 
but the memory of the van had haunted me since we'd gone inside to have dinner with his family. We were both still six months away from getting licenses, and when his father offered to carry me home, I didn't object. Giving AJ a quick hug, I followed his father out into the garage and got in. As he backed out of the driveway, I turned and looked back to see if the van was still sitting there. I didn't like the nervous feeling I'd had for the past several hours, and if it was still lurking out there, I figured I'd ask AJ's father about it. But the van was gone, and while there may have been a dark puddle on the road where it had been, that could have just as easily been a trick of the light. I texted AJ right away that the van was gone, but I didn't get a response by the time I got dropped off at home. Heading inside, I told my parents goodnight and went up to take a shower before getting ready for bed. It was only when I got out of the shower that I saw I'd missed several texts from AJ. Sweetums, just looked and the van is still out there. Maybe it left and came back right after you were gone. I don't know. Sweetums, no, it's dumb, but it's bugging me. Think I'm going to go walk by it closer. It's under a light so I can get a better look. Sweetums, shit, it's cold out here. Wish you were with me, smiley face. Sweetums. Okay, I just walked by it twice. It really does look like blood. I don't know. It's still dripping some from the bumper, and there's a big puddle under the van, I think. Sweetums. Also leaking from the big slide door on the other side. Me. Get away from there. Go back inside, please. Sweetums. I hear something inside. Music. Wait, that's mine. Me. Leave it alone. You're scaring me. Go back home and call me. Don't mess with that thing anymore. Sweetums. I think I should knock on the door. Someone could be hurting there. Besides therapy, just... Uh, uh, me. Baby, answer me. Me. Answer me, please. You're scaring me. Me. I just called and you didn't answer. If you don't answer me in the next two minutes, I'm calling your house. Sweetums. They saw me. Me. Who? Me. Who saw you? Sweetums. White face. At the window. Sweetums. I ran. Didn't want to show where I lived. Behind gas station. I was terrified now. I thought I knew where he was talking about. There was a closed down gas station on the block behind his street. If he ran all the way there, he was either pulling a big prank on me or he was really scared. Me. Are you just fucking with me? Be honest or I'll be mad. Sweetums. Someone is coming. Me. Coming to get you. Stay where you are. If you can. Coming. I was already running downstairs, yelling for my parents to get up, that we had to go help AJ, that he was in trouble. Usually they would have argued, but I guess they could see by how I looked that something was really wrong. We loaded up in my mom's SUV, and I told them where to go. When we got there, we rode all around the front and back of the gas station, but there was no sign of AJ or anything else out of the ordinary. I'd held off texting or calling while we were headed over, just in case some light or noise from the phone gave away his hiding spot to whoever was following him. But after we couldn't find him, I started doing both as we slowly headed back toward his house. He never answered, and when we got to his house, he wasn't there either. His parents had not even known he had left the house again, and they hadn't heard anything from him either. We all went out looking again, and close to midnight, it was pitch black outside. But that also meant the streets were empty. No cars, no people, and no AJ walking back home. When we didn't find him that time, his parents called 911. Two police cars showed up a few minutes later, and while two of the officers talked to AJ's mom and dad, the other talked to me. I told them everything I could think of, about us walking back from the movie, about the van, about the blood coming from it, and what had happened when AJ went back out to confirm what he'd seen. The officer didn't comment, but I could tell she was skeptical, and she thanked me and went to talk to my parents inside. I walked up and down the street in front of his house, calling out to him, looking for some sign I'd missed. I could still see the reddish-brown puddle where the van had been. 
I should have pointed it out to the cop before, but that should get them to believe me. Maybe they could even get a sample and tell us if it was human blood. But whatever, I didn't care about being right, I just wanted to get AJ back in. The van was sitting down the street. It hadn't been there earlier. I had just walked that way a couple of minutes earlier, and I know it wasn't there. And I would have noticed if a car had pulled up while I was out there. But there it was, just the same. My mouth was dry. I wanted to go back inside and get the cops, but I was afraid if I did, by the time I got them out here, the van would have disappeared again. So first, I take a couple of pictures. I snapped two of the front corner, but I was so far away that even with the street lights, you could barely make anything out. I glanced back toward the house, hoping the policewoman I'd been talking to would come back outside. I just waved her down and she could see for herself. But no luck. I was alone outside for the moment. Swallowing, I walked further down the street so I could get a closer and better picture of the side of the van. That weird painting on the side should make it easy to find again if it ran off or disappeared. I framed up the picture and went to snap it when I realized something. The painting had changed. It was still a painting of the same strange oval lake, but this time the scene seemed to be at night. A misshapen yellow moon hung high in a dark purple sky, washing everything in its pale glow. I could see the distant towers of a black castle on the far shore, and scattered around the moon itself were little tears in the night sky that could have been black stars. My phone sank as I stared at the van. Was it the same van? It had to be, right? It looked the same except for the painting and... Well, maybe it looked a bit newer than it had before. Still, I didn't understand what was going on and I needed to stop being an idiot and get some help. I raised my phone again to take one last picture when it buzzed in my hand. Stabbing the message with my thumb, I turned my phone to read it. Sweetums, get away from the van. Please don't come closer. I felt the air thicken in my throat as I reread the message and fumbled to write a response. Me. Are you okay? Where are you? Are you in there? Sweetums, yes. But please stay away. You have to stay away. Me. No, I'm getting you out. I looked up as I realized I was hearing music periodically play nearby. I thought it was coming from inside the van, and while it was muffled, I still recognized it. It was AJ's ringtone. Me. I hear your phone getting the cop. I heard the music again and suddenly I remembered something AJ had texted earlier. I hear something inside. Music. Wait, that's mine. I felt the world starting to sway around me as my phone buzzed again. Sweetums. No. You don't understand. Me. What don't I understand? Sweetums. It's not just me in here. You're here too. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this story, please like, share, and subscribe. And for more information about my books, as well as news and updates, visit Veristall.com. Until next time.